Is it too difficult to create this 3D model with AutoCAD? Not really. During this tutorial, I'll show you how to go from this plan in 2D to this 3D model without much of a problem. This is EasyCAD for you and welcome to 3D House Modeling in AutoCAD. During this video, we'll cover the modeling portion of our project, but with the following ones, we'll cover how to add materials, lights, do the rendering, and finally how to create a movie out of a 3D drawing. So I hope you will find this interesting, and if so, please thumbs up to like the video. On screen we have the plan we've been working with and since we'll be using it to create our 3D model, the first thing we'll do is call the Layers Palette Manager, either by typing it or on the Home tab Layers module. We turn off some layers that we won't be using, make sure to create a 3D wall layer and make it current so you have your walls on a specific layer and keep visible our regular A wall layer. Now, since we'll be doing a 3D, we'll change our workspace from drafting and annotation to 3D modeling. And we have this option down here at the status bar. But another option is over here from the quick access toolbox. And this will bring up the most common tools and commands for 3D modeling. Now, to start seeing what we'll do, let's go to View tab, View Styles module, and let's change our visual style from 2D wireframe to conceptual style. Press the wheel on your mouse and then the shift key at the same time in your keyboard and start moving it and this will activate the 3D orbit command and move the mouse until you get a position more or less like this. You can also use the preset views available here in the view tab views module and from the options available select the one you prefer like you know like I'm doing right now with southwest isometric. But we have them here as well in the steering wheel and a final option is here in the left top hand corner of our model space and throughout the tutorial I'll use them so you can see how this works. I like however the shortcut of pressing the mouse wheel and the shift key because this allows me to quickly orbit and get a position I need. Now we go to home tab to start creating our model. The first command we'll use command press pull and it prompts to select objects or boundary area. Basically, this will allow us to extrude the area inside of a set of objects like closed polylines or lines, as is in this case with our exterior walls. When we choose the area inside of our walls, we see now the preview of our walls being extruded and the two options given are, number one, we have to give it the height of the extrusion or number two, to choose the multiple option. I'm going to select multiple to use it also on this interior wall, since I might say this is a structure wall. Now hit enter and it goes back to the option of entering the height. You can click on screen to specify a second point, or as I'm doing here, just enter 12 feet. In this case, we have all of our walls on screen at once. Now let's sort it a little bit. You already know how to do it. And let's repeat the command for these walls on the terrace. We select the area inside of our lines, then the height of 3.5 feet when prompt, and voila, we have on screen the walls as well. Now the next assignment is creating the openings for the windows and doors from the plan. So we'll bring them up from the layers palette again. We make the layer for the windows visible so we can have them as a reference. And at the same time, we're going to turn off the layer A wall since we don't need it for now. And to see the location, let's change the visual style again back to 2D wireframe. Now we opt for command box to create one and it will prompt you for the first corner. Select one of the corners here on the windows. The next prompt is now for the second corner or the other corner. In my case, I'm going to select the length option so I can click the other end of the window. Now it's asking for the width, so I'll click randomly making sure it's big enough, okay? And the final prompt is for the height. So we'll use 48 inches or 4 feet, which is standard for the height of the windows. Now our next step is to create one of these boxes for each one of the openings on the wall. I'll just copy this box to each and every place that I need it. I'm using command copy from the modify module on the home tab 
and when cat requests the base point I'll use one of the corners here on the windows to create copies on the same exact position that I need and I'm assuming you guys know how to paste them in the same equivalent place now I'm using a fifth copy over here to use it for the other wall since this position will require some rotation, right? And I'm assuming this shouldn't be a problem for you guys. A caution note though at this point is that for most of these operations in 3D, you have to have a clear understanding of how to use the UCS or user coordinate system. By default in 3D, we're only allowed to work in terms of working planes, one at a time only. However, we'll be able to work as well on most planes as we walk around, as we orbit, or as we move by enabling the dynamic UCS option. You can see it down here. This is another drawing aid. And just make sure it is active. You can also use F6 to toggle on and off this option. Now we use Command 3D Rotate from the ribbon. And after selecting the object, in this case our box, it prompts for the base point. And since here it really doesn't matter, I'll use this base point. Now it's asking for the rotation axis. So pick the X axis in the gizmo by clicking it. Now we enter the rotation angle, so we'll use 90 for 90 degrees and hit enter. And since it just turned to the right position, finally we'll move it to the same place as the others. We'll use Command, 3D Move, select the object, specify the base point, and move it against the wall. Since we are in this position, we'll repeat the box command to create these other two openings that we'll need. And I hope you can do it on your own at this point. If, like in my case, now you are having problems trying to snap to the points you want, remember we're selecting these uh, points inside the actual 3D walls. So we might have to force CAD to look for these points and we'll do it by typing END and hitting ENTER. So this tells basically AutoCAD to look for only N points around the crosshair. So we will be able to select them. Now, just a quick reminder, if you face any problems, feel free to post them in the comments section. We would like also to have your feedback and we'll help you out as much as we can, so please feel free to post. The height we're using for this sliding door here is actually 8 feet, so we could say this is a custom sliding door. To finish with this wall, we do the box for our final window. You already know how to do it. And this should be simple for you guys. Now we orbit again to the next wall, and we have small windows all around. So, repeat the boxes for these openings as well. You might want to create just one and just copy them. Or do it one by one. This is completely up to you. I'm using Command Copy from the Modify module on the Home tab. And I'm assuming you guys know how to paste them in the same equivalent place. And honestly, I just noticed now that I completely overlooked our entry door over here. So we'll put it more or less in this section. So we'll call command box again. I'll make it 36 inches in length. The width really doesn't matter now. And the height will be 80 inches, which is a standard. Now, I'll move it to its final place. And if you notice, I'm intersecting the actual 3D wall. Finally, we'll do the same for the garage door as well. And hopefully at this point, you already know how to do it. Remember again, if you're unable to select the points inside the 3D walls, uh, zooming in or out might do the trick. But if not, we have to force the snapping. As I said before, by typing the point you're looking for. Maybe you have to type MID for midpoint or END for endpoints. So CAD looks for only this type of points around your crosshair. For the high, we'll use a fit as well. And basically, this is it. We have it on screen. We are done. We will switch now to a top view to move our boxes to intersect all the walls that we'll use to create the openings on the walls for our windows and doors. So you know how to do it. Use Command Move. 
We move all of them to intersect the walls and repeat it as you see it necessary until the boxes are clearly intersecting the walls in the appropriate direction. And as we do this, remember that you can support what we do by liking this video. And our final move with these boxes is to put them where all the openings go, in the right place in the wall, right? So let's call again Command 3D Move, select them one by one, make sure we're selecting all of them. So you might want to orbit a little bit to make sure we're doing it right. So for the doors, they are okay. But the ones for the windows, we'll move them a little bit up in the walls. Now, instead of selecting a base point, let's choose the displacement option. Now we use 0, 0, 3.5 feet. And when you hit enter, they all move 3.5 feet in the Z axis or going up. Now let's go back to Southwest Isometric View and let's change also the view style to conceptual. We'll do one of the so-called Boolean operations to subtract our boxes from the walls. So we go to Home tab, Solid Editing Module, and we use Subtract command. See it prompts for the objects, and this basically refers to the objects to subtract from. We select our walls. The next request now is select the objects again, but in this case, it refers to the objects to be subtracted. We select our boxes one by one, and when we are done selecting, just hit enter to see the results, and this is what we have. Now that we're done with the openings for the windows and doors, we'll go for the roof. And the first thing we'll do is to create a layer for it and make it the active layer. I'll make sure to assign the color red, and second, we'll create a 2D polyline of our roof profile starting here or in any other corner. So we select polyline command and make sure you're not using 3D polyline command, which is right next to it. And I'll explain later why. Please select the outer points on the walls so we have the correct profile. If by any chance you're clicking incorrect ones on the inside, we can always undo the selection and then keep selecting the correct points. We can use the orbit command as we go just to make sure we're selecting the right points to ensure the precision. And open closing the polyline, next thing we'll do is offsetting it. Considering I want to have an overhang of 18 inches, I'll use command offset like in regular 2D, specify 18 inches and click towards the outside. Now we can del delete the original if we want. And remember, I just said don't use 3D polyline. That's because we cannot offset 3D polylines, OK? Maybe in future versions of CAD, and I think this is something we might want to suggest to Autodesk. Now we move this polyline 10 inches up to account for the fascia board on our overhang later on. So take your time if you need it for this. Use regularly command move and you know how to enter 0, 0, 10. Now we will extrude this polyline to project towards the roof area to create the roof. So we call command extrude here. Now we see the extrusion preview after selecting the polyline. But instead of extruding straight the roof, we will opt for the taper angle option. We can click the option or enter T as I'm doing. And the next prompt is specify angle of taper for extrusion. Since I want the inclination of my roof or the pitch to be 33 degrees, I'll select 57, which is the difference to get to 90 degrees. The next request is to enter the height of the extrusion, and our final height will be determined by the slope or the pitch of the roof. So it really doesn't matter the number we enter here. I'm going to try 50, and this is what we get. As you see, this is not a full projection of the roof. So what we do now is to remove this top area. We go to the solid editing module, pull the extrude faces menu, and from the options, select delete faces. Now can request the face to be removed. So we click on the area we want to remove and make sure we are only removing the top face on the roof. Down here we'll see the amount of faces selected, but the preview will let us know if we selected the right one for this operation. Once we are sure of what we're doing and upon hitting 
enter we eliminate the face and this is what we have we have on screen the full projection of the roof now we exit the command for the following couple of prompts hitting enter and this is roughly the roof we'll have of course we have this gap here of 10 inches as we mentioned before so this will account for the fascia board maybe or for the width of the trusses inside at the very end so we'll extrude it again to close this gap but we'll do it in the opposite direction in the opposite way we will orbit it a little bit to position where we see our face from below and now we'll call again command extrude faces it requests the face to extrude make sure to select it correctly and then enter 10 for 10 inches and if it asks for the taper angle we just enter zero because that's what we want we want a straight extrusion in this case and this is the outcome now we orbit again a little bit to see what we have and of course we could add tons and tons of details to this like spanish roof tiles or gutters along the perimeter line of the roof so if you want to add some extra details on the modeling process this is the right time to do it something that we'll be adding for sure is the floors the area of the surroundings like walkways grass etc we repeat the base of what we just did by creating a layer for these elements i'm doing here one for the sidewalks we'll call it just that way sidewalks and make sure it's gonna be the active one we'll assign a gray color now i'm going to a top view again and then we'll do a regular box more or less this way and we can give it a negative height of six inches so it doesn't project towards the inside of our house but in the opposite direction actually if we enter six inches positive however this is the result you can see a change in the view and also the view style you see actually that it interferes with our house so in this case what it will do is to elevate our house six inches so it matches the top of the floor we just did now what we'll do is to move it up a little bit more maybe in this case six inches you know how to do it at this point now to create the area for the grass we go back to conceptual visual style to a top view as well now we dedicate a layer to it again we can call it turf or if you prefer you can call it grass we assign the color i'm using here is dark green we select command box again specify the two required points let's make sure we're specifying a huge a big uh, section a big area because we want it that way we'll see later why and for the height we'll specify three inches this will be our green area on the surroundings and we'll need it for the rendering later on our final step will be creating our windows and doors and place it in position but this is going to be reserved for the next video in which we'll introduce as well the concept of adding materials to your objects or model well friends this is all for today remember thumbs up if you like the video you can also subscribe to my channel for more content you are more than welcome to share this tutorial with your friends and if you want to after clicking like you will have the option to do it in several platforms okay if by any chance there is something you don't quite understand or if you happen to have any questions please feel free to post them and we'll do our best to answer ASAP. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time.